Hardworking Academy viewer says they're stuck on a topic called the Human Development Index and they want to know how it is calculated. Well, I have no idea, but let's investigate. So really, when you get down to it, all an index is, is it's a way of summarizing a lot of data, combining them into one number. Why in the world do we want to do that? Well, for whatever reason, we humans just love to rank things. Let me just show you a few examples of a lot of indexes that you can find on the internet to, to try to rank things or track complicated things in a simple way. So here are a few indexes that are pretty common. Now, most people are familiar with stock indexes. There are multiple in every country that you can talk about. And what these stock indexes try to do is come up with one number that tracks a lot of different stocks in one index. And then that way we can track what a lot of complicated you know, various stocks are doing by tracking just one number. And these are just some that are common in various countries. Now, some other indexes, uh, one that people talk a lot about in economics these days is an index of economic freedom. There are also indexes of personal freedom. People like to construct these numbers where they can easily rank countries according to some measure. And you just have to decide what are the important factors that you think factor into some idea, like here, economic freedom. Here they say business freedom, trade freedom, fiscal freedom, government spending, monetary freedom, etc. And they try to come up with some way to quantify each of these aspects of economic freedom. And then they come up with some number to rank them. So Hong Kong, 89.8, Singapore, 88.6, and so on. Another one here, one I found called the Good Country Index. It ranks based on factors like science and technology, culture, peace and security, etc. There's the World Bank's Doing Business Index, where they try to rank countries on how easy it is to go into a country and start a business, how much paperwork there is, what the waiting times are for starting a business, that kind of thing. There's the Global Peace Index. And the one that the Berkey Academy viewer asked about was the Human Development Index. So this is something that, uh, let's look at the PDF here real quick. So this is an index created by the United Nations Development Program. They have a PDF here that's over 200 pages long that you can download and you can read all about it. Now the interesting part starts uh, about page 212 or so, so let's look at that for a second. So this is on page 208 of the year 2015 report, which they're reporting the 2014 value of their Human Development Index. And so they say that there are one, two, three, four, five different factors. So this is the Human Development Index and its components. So they tell you the index, Norway, 0.944, and the life expectancy at birth, expected years of schooling, mean years of schooling, gross national income per capita, and the GNI per capita rank minus the HDI rank. So basically someone sits down and they decide, hmm, what are the important things that I think would be li linked to human development? And they collect some data and they generate an index. So the question is, how did they generate these, these indexes, 0 0.944, 0 0.935, how did they get those from these other numbers, like life expectancy, 81.6? Well, whenever I don't know how to explain a number, the best method that always occurs to me is, well, let's run a regression. The purpose of the statistical technique called regression is to do exactly that, to try to tell us well, if I have some explanatory variables here, what is a function that can explain a, an outcome variable, a dependent variable here? So what I did is I just 
copied and pasted some of this data from the PDF into Excel and cleaned it up a little bit. So here's my Excel worksheet where I copied and pasted some of those rows of data over here. And I had to clean up some of it because in that PDF they had a lot of like footnote superscripts with letters E, D, etc. And so basically I cleaned up some of the rows in the top and some of the ones in the middle, some in the bottom, and then I copied and pasted some of the data for the countries over here. And I ended up with 34 countries, I think. So some of the ones at the top, some of the ones toward the middle, and some of the ones toward the bottom, just to get a a good selection of the data from some of these countries. And then what I did is I, let me just recreate this for you so you can see the steps. So I highlighted the data and I hit Control C. I'm on a Windows PC to copy that to the clipboard. And then I went into R Studio. So here's R Studio. I'm just going to put this data into R and I'm going to run a regression and see if these values explain that index then you know really well then we can figure out what function was used to calculate it so i've got the data on my computer's clipboard then we can say okay let's say hum dev to give the data set a name equals read dot delim clipboard All right, and then let's do a summary just to make sure it read it in correctly. Let's see what we're dealing with. And we want to make sure that all these quantitative variables were read in as numbers. And for example, one thing I had to do with the gross national income here is it had commas in it in the PDF and R doesn't like commas. If it has a comma in the data it will treat it as a a text variable instead of as a quantitative variable. But I fixed that. So now let's uh, run a regression. So let me attach the data hum dev and let's run a regression. So hum dev dot lm1 lm for linear model this is just a name I'm giving it, equals LM. Oh, by the way, if you want to learn more about how to do regressions, let me just pause here real quickly and show you. If you go to my website, www.berkeyacademy.com, and click on Statistics and Econometrics, I have a long, long, long series of videos over here on the right-hand side focusing on modeling with linear models, so linear regression models. And over here on the right side you can see I have lots and lots of videos about uh, how to do that. Back to our studio. So in order to run a regression you just put the name of your dependent variable which I called HDI for Human Development Index and then a tilde and then the explanatory variables. So LE plus ES so E Y S B plus M Y S plus gross national income plus G N I H D I and then let's see what it gives us for results. So summary humdev dot L M one. So here it's telling us in our regression results, first, residuals, which tells us uh, the, this is the furthest off prediction that our model would do in fitting these variables. So with an index on a scale of 0 to 1, it's telling us that one of our predictions was 0.02 off in the negative direction and uh, in the positive direction the furthest we were off were 0.015 so that doesn't look too bad another measure of fit you want to look at when you're trying to explain something or, or recreate a formula someone else has done is the R squared and R squared goes between 0 and 1 
And if this was exactly 1, it would mean that we have exactly been able to figure out what they had done. 0.9966 is darn close. So that means we've almost perfectly been able to come up with a formula to recreate what they have done in creating this index. So that's pretty good. And now what, what we want to look at here are these estimates. And let me get rid of these the scientific notation nonsense here. In R, an easy way to do that is options SIPIN. SIPIN stands for like a penalty for using scientific notation. If you set this to be a number like, you know, seven or eight, it tells R don't use scientific notation unless you have a really big or a really small number. And so now we see what those coefficients are really. Well, let's type the formula out so we can see exactly what this is doing. So we can type up the results of our little inquiry here this way. Our formula for how they calculated this human development index, we can write this way. Human development index equals minus 0.154. We'll just round off here. Minus 0 0.154 plus. So that's the y-intercept. If all these other values are 0, that would be the value of the index. Life expectancy, so plus 0 0.00767. 0 0.00767 times the life expectancy in a country plus... 0.0114 times the expected years of schooling at birth. Okay, plus, go to the next line here, 0 0.0187. 0.0187 times the mean years of schooling plus gross national income. So this is a very small number since gross national income is a very large number. So 0 0.0000000536 times gross national income. Hopefully I've gotten the right number of zeros there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then the last one is this difference in two rankings that they, they computed some other way, but that's all right. So minus 0 0.001154 times this other variable that they have, GNI, HDI, that I called it. Okay, and so that's our formula. So if we take this formula and then we go back to that table from the PDF here, we can just plug in these numbers that they gave us, 81.6, 17.5, 12.6, 64.992, and 5, and plug them into that formula, and we will get a very good approximation of this human development index that they calculated. So let's do one last thing in this video. Let's quantify how close we are in a different way. Now that r squared that I, that I told you about, that tells us that we are really, really close to perfectly replicating their index. But let's, let's do this in a slightly different way. Let's see what our formula here that r calculated would predict for our observations. And let's calculate a percentage difference, right? What percent are we off, okay? So in order to do that, let's say, um, write table, so I'm getting it to write some data out, and what I want it to write out is the predicted values for this regression that we ran, humandevelopment.lm1, and so humdev.lm1 dollar sign and fitted values is what we want there. And where do I want it to write out? I want it to write it out into the clipboard again. This is a very easy way to copy things back and forth between Excel or some, you know, some other kind of spreadsheet program. 
So that has copied the fitted values to the clipboard. Let's go back to our little Excel worksheet here. Here's our predicted values. Well, let's just hit Control V and paste those. Okay, so there are our predicted values. And let me just copy these over here closer so that we can eyeball them a little bit better. So the predicted versus the actual. And you can see how close these are. Pretty close. I mean, this one's a little off, which makes you wonder. But let's see what percentage difference there is between what our model is giving and the actual. So let's just do a little percent difference formula here. So equals 100 times the actual minus the predicted divided by the actual. And let's see how far off. So 0.4% off. About 2% off, 3% off, oh, sorry, 0.3% off, 0.7% off. Um, so 2% off looks to be the farthest away. Most of these others are closer than 1%. Okay, that's 1%, 2%. Yeah, so the worst we've done here is being about 2% off the actual. So that tells us that this formula we created using a regression is doing a darn good job. But it also tells me that maybe we're missing a little something. So uh, that's about as much as I can say about the topic. Uh, using regression to figure out how somebody created an index, usually a good way. The, the last question is, why would they pick these values? I don't know. Maybe you could write and ask them. So this is Berkey Academy signing off. Indexes are a very common thing that you see around these days. Uh, explore a few. See what you think. As always, good luck in all of your studies.